Well, thanks very much, Jason, uh, for your introduction. Today I'm going to be talking about the Azure Machine Learning Workbench. Um, Azure Machine Learning Workbench is new. Microsoft released it at Ignite in September of 2017. Um, this tool contains a lot of really neat features. Um, a lot of them were previously in the Project Pendleton. If you have heard about that, that's where that went to, which is sort of like Power BI on steroids, and we'll take a look at that. So I wanted to just kind of dive right into it and show you what the capabilities of Azure Machine Learning Workbench are. All right, a little bit of information about me. My name is, of course, Ginger Grant. I am an independent consultant in advanced analytics. I recently wrote a book on uh, the test prep for Azure Machine Learning, which will be out in March. I am on Twitter way too much at DesertIsleSQL.com. And if I blog quite a bit, as a matter of fact, I will have a blog post about Azure Machine Learning Workbench later today. And um, if you want to get a hold of me, my email's up there, ginger.grant at desertislesql.com. So now a little bit about what I'd like to talk about today. I want to, of course, introduce uh, the Azure Machine Learning Workbench, tell you about it, um, give you, have you take a look at it. And then what I always get for people who are familiar with the previous tool, um, Azure um, ML is what's the difference, what's the compare, or what's the story with it, and we'll take a look at that. Um, looking at some of the features of Azure Machine Learning Workbench, of course, and look at the Azure components involved with it, and look at some of the strengths and weaknesses of the product, which I will say is still in preview. So. Um, give them a, cut them a little bit of slack for that. So what is Azure Machine Learning Workbench? Um, it's the in preview, and it's the new tool for creating and managing machine learning exp um, experiments. It is based in Python. Um, it is, you can use R with it, but the tool itself is designed for use with Python. Uh, one of the things that it was designed to do is incorporate model management. So while there is a desktop application and um, that is what you'll be using, Microsoft's whole goal was not just to provide a tool that you could use to create machine learning components. The thought behind machine learning workbench is that it would be an environment for creating and deploying and tracking versions of any and all components that are created. So it's incorporating this kind of whole idea of model management. Uh, there's been a lot of talk in the industry about tracking um, with uh, machine learning specifically because traditionally that kind of work was done with data, by data scientists. And what data scientists tended to do is they create a data model, they would throw it over the fence at somebody and they would probably create a Java app for it which may or may not still work the same way the person who wrote it did it, because they might have written it in SAS or R, and then that, that was what got implemented. And later on, nobody knew what was implemented where, um, and businesses had no idea what necessarily was running or, or what the analysis was built on. So the idea is that machine learning workbench would solve those problems. If you want to go ahead and download it, please do. It is, um, you cannot f go and find a link for it though. You have to have an Azure account. And within Azure is where you install the machine learning workbench onto your local machine. There are versions for both Mac and Windows uh, out of the box. And um, when you are creating a Azure machine learning account, um, it, you have that capability to do so in two data centers in the US and East Australia. So if you are currently located in Europe, uh, sorry, there is not currently a location where the tool is available. So the next question I get when I'm um, talk, talking to people about this new tool is, what about the old tool? What about Azure Machine Learning? What's the deal with that? Is Microsoft abandoning it? Well, since I don't work for Microsoft, I can't specifically speak to whether or not they're going to abandon it or not. But in their talk on Ignite, they did talk about the fact that they are migrating resources to Azure Machine Learning Workbench. 
Well, what that means more than likely is that the Azure ML product is not going to get any more development love. Probably is going to stay as it is. Um, not doesn't necessarily mean Microsoft is going to kill it, but if they're not going to put anything else towards it, you may want to consider uh, options in the future that don't include it because if Microsoft isn't putting any love towards it, who knows how long it'll last. But they have not announced anything about its imminent demise. But when asked about, well, why did you go ahead and create um, another tool when you had Azure ML already created? And this is a quote from an Ignite, Ignite talk where somebody asked that, asked that question. Um, they said that, that Azure ML was designed for developers and Azure Machine Learning Workbench is designed for data scientists. So I, I'm thinking based on what I've heard that when Microsoft looked in the industry and talked to people about the product, they wanted to incorporate features and functionality that it did not include and they decided that a whole rewrite would be easier than fixing it. But that's a guess on my part. Again, I don't work for Microsoft, but a new tool is designed to be the thing that they're putting the resources into at this point in time. So what are the differences between the two products? Why are there two products? What is Microsoft going for with this anyway? Well, with Machine Learning Workbench, you have to have an Azure account. Um, you download it from Azure. You must have an Azure account. Now, granted, you can get a free Azure account. You can get an Azure account with Visual Studio. So there are ways of doing it, and it's still not costing you any money, but um, you do have to have an Azure account. Um, with Azure ML, you could use the um, Azure ML Studio. It didn't. It was the only really free Azure tool there was. Uh, you can still use it, and it's still a great place to to learn stuff. And you don't even need to give them a credit card. Um, so there, while there is a free version with Azure Machine Learning Workbench, I was talking to somebody recently who had been was playing with it, and he clicked the wrong thing and. Um, realized it when he burned through his $150 in his MSDN account that he had clicked the wrong thing. So make sure that when you are setting it up that you do select the free option for it. Um, the Azure Machine Learning Workbench is desktop and cloud. Both of, It includes both of those components. You do not have to use the desktop tool, but if you use the desktop tool, it has to be incorporated with um, your Azure account. Um, whereas in Azure ML, it's only a cloud-based tool and there never were any plans on bringing it to the desktop. They're both designed to be very scalable with um, Azure Machine Learning Workbench. We'll go into some of the underlying architecture, but the idea is that it will scale over nodes using Kubernetes so that as many resources as you are willing to pay for are the resources that you can use to execute it upon. And Azure ML, is when you created it, its endpoint was a web service, and that web service could be deployed um, locally or, or in the cloud, and again, you could put as many resources as you want to against that as well. Azure Machine Learning is designed to very tightly integrate with other, other Azure tools, but Azure ML is really designed to create a web service, and the web services are deployed to other tools. So they're not as tightly coupled together in any way, shape, or form. Um, with Azure Machine Learning Workbench, you, it was designed to work with your development environment. It's not designed to necessarily to be the tool where you write code. It is designed to be an environment where you can write code. Whereas with Azure ML, well, you well, you did everything in the UI or you didn't do anything at all. So uh, totally different um, analysis uh, between these two, two, two tools. They, they work differently. I pulled this screen off of one of Microsoft's uh, demos that we had a long time ago about Project Pendleton. A lot of people may have heard about that project. All the research that went into that has gone into Azure ML Workbench. One of the biggest uh, complaints or with data scientists is that they have to spend so much time fixing data that it takes away from the time that they spend doing algorithms. 
I've seen anywhere up to 75% of your time as a data scientist is spent massage manipulating or tweaking the data. And this can be very time consuming, especially if um, that's not really your forte. If you are an algorithms person, you may or may not have a really good set of tools in your toolkit for how to modify data. And so this ta task is something that data scientists are generally complaining about. Well, Project Pendleton is designed to provide a methodology so that you can modify the data using a example basis. Um, you show it how you can, how you want the data to be changed. You type that in, and it'll apply that to the entire column of data. Um, and if it may take a couple of tries to get it right, but it can do that. So it's a lot like M. It's kind of an ab um, elaboration of the M code in Power Query and Power BI, and, and some of the func feature functionalities that have been re recently added in Power BI are very similar. Um, like with M, you can also go back by reversing a step. But when Project Pendleton is implemented, what it does is it creates a library of code that you call with Python, and then those steps are implemented within your code. So it's an intermediate way of, of decreasing the time that it takes to do uh, data analysis. I really think that this is going to be one of the bigger advances in data science in general is there are going to be more and more tools that are designed to improve the ability to massage and manipulate data. Um, for those of you who aren't that familiar with data science, even if you are completely have completely clean data, you still may need to manipulate it for the algorithms that you are using. Um, for example, some only want to see values between 0 and 1, so you need to make sure your data is in that format. So it's not necessarily clean data or missing data, it's just manipulation that you need to perform in order to use the algorithm that you want to use. Azure Machine Learning Workbench is based on Python. Um, while Azure Machine Learning has both R and Python, you, I can, we'll talk a little bit later about how you can incorporate R, but it's not designed for R, it's designed to do Python. Well, why is this? Well, probably because Microsoft can read. Um, according to Data Science Central, August uh, of last year, Python is overtaking R for data science and machine learning. It, Python is, is gaining strength over R um, for a number of different reasons. Um, I am giving a pre-con at uh, SQL Saturday Phoenix, and I will go into the reasons in detail, but suffice it to say it's happening, and Microsoft is taking advantage of it. While how you can incorporate our components is not necessarily through uh, the machine learning workbench tool. What you do is you, you create the components, and you load them up into Azure and incorporate them into the solution there. So it's not a native interface for R, although R components still can be used as part of your solution. Uh, you can develop within the tool itself as um, the Azure Machine Learning Workbench contains not only Python 3, but also an installation of Scikit-Learn is loaded as well. Other libraries you will, of course, need to include. Um, but you can also develop within your own tool and kind of go back and forth between machine learning workbench and your tool. Um, there's, unlike the previous tool, Azure um, Machine Learning, it's really an interface. If you want to learn how to select algorithms or pick training sets, there's going to be other places that you need to go for that because the tool is not going to help you at all. Uh, there is no drag and drop GUI. You have to know what you're doing to be able to use this tool. I guess that was Microsoft's intent for having this be a um, tool more for data science. They assume that you know what you're doing when you walk in. It's not going to help you do anything any more than any Python UI will be able to do that. When you are done with your model, you need to create a Python pickle file, which is kind of a standard library that you use in Python to create an object format that you will load into, into Azure. 
The other component of Azure Machine Learning is the model management. Uh, I was listening to one of the rollout talks that Microsoft provided for it, and they talked about the business problem that they were hearing is that I have no idea what is loaded. I can't, I don't know what models are loaded where, I don't know what versions, I don't know how to roll back, um, and none of this information has been particularly documented because a lot of data science stuff has basically been the Wild West. I mean, they did not, the people who wrote it weren't necessarily a part of the IT group, and so things just sort of happened. And that's uh, rapidly coming to a close because people aren't willing to risk all of their data in a bad analysis because nobody knows how old the model is. So the idea is the Azure components of machine learning workbench provide the ability to version a model. You can roll back. Not, not such a big deal, but it is in the ML world. Um, there's tracking. You can see who created the model, when it was created, you know, what components were used in it, into it. Incorporates uh, Docker containers. Um, and you can deploy with um, Kubernetes to allow for a greater scale. But you do not have to uh, deploy uh, onto the cloud. You also have the ability to do a local deployment and have it track through the cloud. So that model management is really an add-on feature that's available no matter where it's deployed. So kind of give you a, a, the visualization of what Microsoft is thinking about the components that are involved in this tool. If we look, start looking on the left, this is where you have your Python code. Um, the model, uh, the, the score PY is just some Python code that you have that, that creates some kind of a score with a data set. The model would be a number of different directories that were involved with it. And then the, a, a JSON file uh, containing um, the schemas, a conda file containing the, run, the runtime libraries and dependencies, and that way um, you can specify also the runtime components. So the stuff on this section of the screen, this is all meant to be generated either within Azure Machine Learning Workbench or just in Python in general. And then you will um, create a pickle, fi pickle file to upload it, which they're not showing here. When you are done with your model, what you will do is you will deploy it using machine learning model man management. You're going to create a model registry. The registry will be all of the um, all of the experiments you've created for machine learning. You will have a manifest that you can generate different images. You will have a Docker image registry. And for, for those who don't understand Docker, because I know that a lot of people are kind of just getting involved with that, what Docker allows you to do is create a virtual environment containing all the components you need to run uh, your components. This is a big deal in Python because Python is not really a program. Python is a program with a whole series of libraries and two people may be using the same libraries but if they use different versions the versions will overwrite each other and one or both one of them won't work if the other library is deployed. So by allowing for Docker components you could have different um, versions of the same libraries in play four different models and, and use those images as part of the registry. And this is also part of your versioning as well. And the, the, Docker, save, the Docker container service is deployed to the um, Azure container service, which is a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, Kubernetes was, though, was a system designed by Google to manage, to manage clusters. Contain, cluster containers. So this allows for a more scalable deployment and management of the various containers. And of course, you do not have to deploy to the cloud. You also have the ability to deploy to a single machine, but the idea would be that the machine deployment would be handled in the machine learning mo management model so that you're still able to see the, the runs and the speed of all that is recorded in the machine learning model so that you can track its performance over time. All right, so what I wanted to do initially is take a look at the components for the machine learning desktop. And since most of you haven't 
uh, seen a look at that, I'll um, give you an example of that now. This is the machine learning workbench. You'll notice it's in preview. I downloaded this from Azure. We'll get into the components that are in that as well. And what I've done is I've created a, a, a new project. And the project is um, designed to process uh, UFO data and clean it. And then I want to do some analysis on who's seen what kind of UFO where. So, like uh, M in Power Query, you'll see that I've got these various steps here on the side. And this is what I used to create um, to create my anal my data wrangling on this particular data. So what I can go ahead and go into edit, and it's showing me where's my source. So this is the source data that, that I used, and this is where it's contained. And then what I, the next step that I created, whoops, was to, and you'll see like um, with Power BI, you can go through the steps when you click on, click on them. So the next thing that I did in my particular data sample is I wanted to split date and time. I wanted to know what time people were seeing UFOs. So if I click on this, you'll see that I created an example where I split the time and I entered the, the date and time and then it automatically split it for me using that example. And then what I wanted to do is I wanted to rename this date and time to incident date, which is what it's doing here, and rename, rename the, the incident date a little bit better, and rename date time to, to incident time. These are some examples of things that you can create. One of the um, many things that you can do with modifying your data flow. Unlike what you're doing, though, in um, within Power BI, the purpose of doing this is to create uh, code that you would then uh, look at in, um, in Python because it's going to create libraries for you to execute using the information that you see within here. So if we go to um, one of the things that you do when you are uh, going to be using um, Azure Machine Learning, you do have to log into Azure because it is registering the components within Azure. So the data can never be separate from your screen. It's also anticipating that you will be using either Azure Team Foundation Services or GitHub. While you do not have to, it calls it optional. It's kind of a giant pain if that is not indeed the case. Uh, so that's kind of misleading when they tell you that you can, that you can do that. It allows me, this allows me to search any Jupyter notebooks that I have. This will allow me to look at the number of runs that I have on my data. And this is where my, my file listings are. One thing about this particular application is it's relatively new. And as it's new, there's a lot of features that it really doesn't have. So one of the things that I could also do is I can, you know, go into um, PowerShell to run that way. You don't have to use the IDE at all. And here are some of the default splits that I could do on my on my data. Um, and I also have various you know plots that are available to me on my um, for my data so that I can take a look at it visually. Not a whole lot um, is provided um, provided for that, but uh, there are some things that I have the ability to do. So the whole goal with this would be to create a um, an Azure to create within Machine Learning Workbench, or if I wanted to do it outside, to create Python code, which I've got here. Hold on one second. That I would use to create an experiment, and then I would take that experiment and load the experiment. into Azure. So I've got my, my clean UFO Python data and my training and my scoring solution here and the rest of the files are created um, are created uh, for for use by Azure um, by Azure Studio. Azure uh, Azure ML workbench, excuse me. 
So now I've got my code, I've got it created. It's a really, a for, the format of this is really non-intuitive. You, you will have to probably walk through the tutorials to be able to figure out how to make this happen. And you'll need to make sure that everything is referenced in Azure. So going back here to the slides real quick. So what are the Azure components of the machine learning workbench? Why, why do I have to do with the Azure and, and, and how does it work? The application does not work on itself. As a matter of fact, you can't even run it unless you've previously set some things up. So what is required is that you set up Azure model management. You have to create a storage account and every machine learning project that you create is part of a machine learning experimentation that exists in Azure and that is how that information is tracked. So let's take a look at the components within Azure. All right. Within Azure, I've got a resource group containing all of the components that I've created for Azure ML, if you want to do this from scratch, and I'll go ahead and do this just to show you how to make this happen. If I want to create oh, I think it's here. Here we go, Azure Machine Learning Experimentation Preview. This is what you need to use to create, an Azure, to even to download Azure Machine Learning Workbench. If I go ahead and click on this, you'll see that the this is where you create your experimentation and then you have the ability to download Azure ML. So uh, the first two are free, so make sure that you watch this on the number of seats. You'll notice, oh, they added Europe. That's great, because last when I last looked at this in December, they hadn't added it, and Southeast Asia. So there's more and more coming up all the time. It's going to want to use a, a resource group, um, workspace. You're going to need to create a model management account and a model management, and look at the model management to your pricing. Um, even if you are planning on using this for production environment, you can always scale up. So you might want to start, especially if this is dev, just use the dev test version. If later on you design a whole bunch of models and you want to scale up, you always can. But why not start out with it not costing you anything? So you can actually work on it and not cost anything. But remember to make sure that the number of seats that you have selected is two and that you have selected the dev test option when you are creating your um, machine learning experimentation tier. I won't make you sit around and wait for that to happen, so I'll go back to my machine learning account that I have set up. So when you've got it completed, then you have the ability to download Azure Machine Learning Workbench. Notice it's not previously available until you have created your um, machine learning experimentation. Um, and of course, like I said, it's available for Windows and for Mac. You will need to create an account for model management for deployment purposes, and it also provides a tutorial for that as well. The components that you have, going back to a resource group here. Come on. You'll notice that I have created several um, um, machine learning experimentation accounts. This is these, these are created within Azure Machine Learning Workbench, and then they are associated with this project. So this is where the code lives. So when I'm creating code locally, I'm creating models in Azure where the code lives so that they can be tracked. 
They also do need to have a, a default um, storage account. Model management is where the models are managed and deployed. This is the location where all of the versioning for the models takes place. Um, you can configure it for um, to do how models be deployed, either GitHub or RTFS. You can use the um, command line or the APIs to manage and deploy your models. When you are creating models, this is also where you can deploy models created in R. The mods, um, so that you could upload the, the models here so that they can be run as well um, using the same container-like performance. But you're, this is going to be a manual effort on your part to create the, um, the modules and then incorporate them as part of the model management in Azure. So I wanted to go about the strengths and the weakness over some of the strengths and the weaknesses for this particular tool to give you an idea of what it's really good at. The tool is really pretty new, and for many new tools, you know, it just doesn't have the rich set of features that you would expect. But give them time; they've got all the resources that were previously working on Azure Machine Learning. So there is a number of people who are working on making this more feature rich. One of the strengths, I think, is it's not just a cloud tool. You, um, the management is, is all designed in Azure as a central location for, for models to information to be gathered. But it's not just a cloud tool. You can deploy locally, and just the management of the is available in the cloud. It allows you to use your own development environment. I say that, but you could right now it only supports Visual Studio and PyCharm. So if you have a favorite IDE, uh, it does include Jupyter Notebooks, but I prefer Spider to PyCharm. I'm out of luck. I can't use any kind of integration with that and with um, Azure Machine Learning Workbench. Um, you are able to deploy components as models, and you can roll them back. But on the weaknesses, it's very new. It is not something that is going to be easy for the novice learner to use. Um, Azure ML provided a great UI interface to get people to understand, you know, how algorithms work, you know, training, testing. You're on your own here. Um, hopefully you know what you're doing. If not, there are a number of great places where you can learn how to code Python and machine learning. It doesn't readily create deployable models. Yes, you can create them, but it's a bit of a kludge right now. It's not a very elegant solution, and the deployment of them is kind of, it's kind of, it's a lot of effort to make that happen. And it's tied very strongly to one language. If you, I don't know why they made it so that incorporating R with your machine learning experience is so difficult, but having to, you know, download them upload them separately into the workbench is kind of a, it's kind of a scenario that's, you know, not exactly elegant, and there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to include the various tools in there, but, hey, you can't now. Hopefully, at some point in time, the incorporation will be a little bit better than it is now. So, in summary, I wanted to review what is Azure Machine Learning Workbench. It's Microsoft's new tool that is a hybrid of cloud and desktop designed for not only um, the creation of Azure of, of machine learning components that can be installed into Azure, but also as a management tool as well. It compares to the existing application by the fact that it is not a learner tool. It's designed for those who already are familiar with data science components. Um, but if you want to learn, I highly recommend going and playing with the Azure Machine Learning application. Some of the features that it contains are its ability to integrate straight with, with TFS Online and GitHub, and you can uh, use your tools or their tools to be able to write code, which is, uh, you're probably going to want to use yours, just saying. Um, the Azure components that are available are the management components, the model components, and the storage and resource group that you need to be to be able to configure to in order to run it. Um, we went over some of the strengths and weaknesses of the of the tool, what it can do, what it can't do. Um, 
And with that, I wanted to leave a lot of time for questions regarding this new tool. And I wanted to also let you know that I will have a new post on the features and introductory elements of Azure Machine Learning that I will be posting on my blog later today. Jason, are there any questions? Hey, Ginger, yes, there are quite a few. Um, so I think you covered some of these. Actually, I'm pretty sure you covered a, a bunch of these, but I'm just going to go through each of them, and then you can uh, um, answer as, as needed. So the first one is, prior to putting an application into production, is there any cost for using Workbench to create and train a model? No, there is not, because the training is all done on your machine using your components, using what they what they do is, um, or anticipate is Python. So it's no different than running Python code on your machine. Great. No cost. All right. When, when you say you wrote the test prep, are you delivering a test prep guide for the MCSA machine learning exams? I, uh, yes, I wrote the, uh, was part of the team that wrote the 7774 um, uh, certification exam for the Azure uh, machine learning application, which will be out in March. All right. And based upon this, the workbench will work in the Azure stack? Absolutely. It's designed to be fully integrated into the Azure stack. All right. Are models interchangeable between Azure ML and Workbench? No, they are not. <laughs> All right. Uh, what does this mean for Revolution R? Microsoft spent all this money on for Revolution Analytics. Revolution Analytics and R still has a, a big place in Microsoft's environment. Um, and I have heard that they're working on incorporating components created in R into the Azure Machine Learning Workbench. But, you know, hey, they were in a hurry. They had to go with what they thought would be the, the best selling points, and they picked the full integration with Python and the kind of halfway integration with R, but that's one of the things that I expect will be better. Um, R has been around for since, you know, actively in production since 1996. Every data science, uh, com you know, company, you know, supports R, talks about R, so there's no reason why R that's obviously why, why Microsoft felt that they needed to incorporate Revolution Analytics into SQL Server, but you'll notice with 2017, they incorporated Python. So things change. All right. How is the space management prices for this tool? Is storage in your blob storage, or do you get plans with it? Um, storage is in blob storage for this. Their models tend to be quite small. So you're not going to be hit up for a lot of storage space for the actual um, components that you create. Where you're going to run into your costs is running it. And the resources that you choose to devote towards um, how many runs and the resources you want to put against it. All right. Do you think Microsoft will eventually make the UI interface similar to Azure ML with the drag and drop capability? Um, from what I have heard, no. Um, they, there are people who really like that, and it appears from the conversations that I had, those aren't the people that they're interested in winning over, because they don't, it didn't play real well in the data science perspective, so I don't think they will, right. other than Pendleton. All right. Let's see. Does Workbench support Cortana so you can ask questions of your data similar to what is shown for IBM Watson? Wow, that would be really cool, but no, it does not. Um, I wonder, I'm, would love to know if that is on Microsoft's feature list because that would be really a neat demo, but it does not do that. All right. And the last question, unless anyone comes in with other questions, is how protected is what you created? Microsoft says your data is secure but I noticed they crawl data. Algorithms is the most coveted piece of software today. So when you are creating a component, it is in your Azure account, and that is where the code is as well. 
So it is as secure as everything else that you have in your Azure cloud. No, the people who have access to it are the ones that are specifically granted there to have access to it. You don't automatically give uh, everyone on the planet access to your components. But one of the things that Microsoft also realized is that a lot of times creating models can be a team experience, that you don't want it just to be belong and owned by one individual. So this whole idea of it being incorporated into GitHub, into TFS, and also the concept of being able to share models between members of a team is definitely part of the architecture so that it can be a collaborative experience if you want that. But you, there's no uh, giving away all of your code to the planet or anything like that. Um, they also don't have anything like specifically integrated like the gallery, which allows you to show all of your stuff off. The idea is that this is more proprietary information and that that would be where you would um, create it and it would live within your Azure tenant. All right. After a model is run in production, can you see the cost that was incurred for that run? I'm going to have to get back to you on that since I have the free version. Um, I, I'm not... It's, I'm not seeing any of that, but I don't know if that's available for the paid version or not. All right. Well, that was our last question. Ginger, uh, thanks for uh, joining us here today. This is a great topic and uh, look forward to hearing from you on similar topics in the future. Great. Thank you so much, Jason. I really appreciate it.